Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, my name is Onur Klintcheker. I am a senior researcher at the University of Antwerp in Belgium. Uh, my colleagues, uh, Moharam, uh, he is here, and Serge, and I conducted an exploratory research, which is a systematic mapping on DevOps for model-based system engineering and model-driven engineering, uh, considering their uh, emerging uh, popularity, uh, both in academia and industry, and as a result, we prepared a systematic mapping, mapping uh, on this topic. And today, uh, I want to share our fi findings in this domain. But before starting my presentation, I want to clarify uh, some uh, important terms. Uh, first one is model-based system engineering. Model-based system engineering is a very common name. is a method for developing uh, complex systems. And in this, uh, we employ a simplified version of the system as a model uh, that can be a graphical model, mathematical model, or physical representation uh, to eliminate and cope with complexity. And in this way, we enhance the requirements, design, uh, analysis, verification, and validation. And model-based system engineering has a broader focus on entire systems which may include both software and hardware components, uh, while uh, model-driven engineering is more narrowly focused on software uh, and the automation of uh, software production through modeling, uh, such as uh, code generation from the model. And on the other hand, uh, DevOps, uh, with, uh, DevOps is a, originally uh, from a cultural philosophy is a set of practices uh, and tools uh, to integrate and automate software development to shorten its life cycle. And the benefits of DevOps uh, can be considered concerning uh, speed, uh, rapid delivery, reliability, improved collaboration, and security. And our motivation in this work is to understand current practice of these terms in their conjunction and prepare a systematic, systematic mapping to answer uh, specific research questions that I will mention later on and share the results with academia and industry. And a systematic mapping uh, study is a research method that offers a structured uh, overview of a broad research area. And it categorizes and summarizes the, lit summarizes the literature in a systematic, transparent, uh, and reproducible way. And this approach is essential, essentially uh, valuable in a rapid evolving fields like DevOps, where uh, it helps to identify research trends, gaps, and the distribution of work across various topics. And within the scope of our systematic mapping, uh, we identified first identified specific research questions uh, mainly related to existing approaches and techniques in devops for model based system engineering and model driven engineering existing tools and frameworks and application domain in this field and the evaluation uh, presented uh, in the in the existing studies and addressed challenges these are the research questions we we address in this uh, systematic mapping and then we um, perform automatic searches and selection strategies. But first, we need to define uh, automatic uh, queries uh, for the specific research questions that, that I showed earlier. Uh, and these queries uh, automatically apply to four, four different digital libraries, uh, ACM, IEEE Explorer, Web of Science, and Science Direct. And then at the end, we uh, perform automatic searches and we have we had uh, 122 uh, papers in total. And after removing uh, duplicates, uh, we ended in 113 uh, papers. And then after applying inclusion and exclusion criteria and selecting primary studies, we have we had uh, 31 uh, papers. And after uh, preliminary uh, snowballing approach, applying snowballing approach, we also added two more uh, papers, and we ended in. 32 primary studies in this field. And in this slide, you see study distribution. Uh, for example, uh, recent years in two, two, 2020 and 21 and 22, 
the number of publications are increasing uh, if I compare the previous years and most of the papers coming from IEEE Explorer, Explorer. and then uh, and also uh, most of the papers mostly conference papers uh, because uh, public pub, uh, publishing the papers in conferences are faster than publishing journals that's why uh, they uh, select conferences and you see most popular venues in this field to most popular conferences. And then when it comes to com company distribution, Austria is the leading field and which uh, followed by France, Spain and Italy. And then you see other com other countries as well. But please note that uh, uh, companies, uh, the countries in Europe uh, most active in this field. And in this slide, you see country year relation. And Austria, uh, for example, has got four publication in uh, last year, and which is followed by Sweden and France and Italy. And this result is a bit interesting uh, because we, uh, we could not expect uh, that much interest from the companies uh, in any field in scientific fields. Uh, in this field, there is uh, there is a huge interest uh, from companies, and then uh, when when we uh, have a look at the distribution of the publications, uh, the universities has got for uh, forty eight percentage uh, uh, of the papers coming from truly universities, but the rest from companies or company and university collaborations. And then in this slide, you see a problem distribution. Uh, we see the problems automation, deployment, design, development and orchestration. The most uh, common problem is deployment. Maybe I can explain uh, the de deployment problem. Deployment problem typically refers to uh, any issues uh, that occurs during the process of uh, moving software from development into a production environment. And on the other hand, automation is well known problem in DevOps lifecycle and it, it refers to automating uh, the processes in CI-CD pipeline. And then in this slide, you see model type distribution. Uh, we, uh, the most commonly uh, used model is meta model, and then it is followed by DSL and UML. Uh, I don't want to uh, mention the details of these models because these models are very common and popular in uh, model-driven engineering and model-based system engineering. And then when it comes to tools and frameworks, Eclipse is the leading uh, tool, uh, considering its flexibility and it offers lots of plugins and so on because, because of its uh, user-friendly uh, 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 op opportunities. They, the companies and the researchers in this field mostly uh, use Eclipse. But you see various kinds of tools and frameworks exist in this field and custom uh, tools also exist in, the, in this field. And in this slide, you see application domain. Uh, leading application domain is Internet of Things, which has got seven uh, publications in recent years, which is followed by cyber physical systems with six publications and cloud applications with five uh, publications. Uh, we also um, specifically analyze the technology readiness level of the, of the existing problem and its solution. Uh, maybe I can uh, simply explain uh, what is technology readiness level. Technology readiness level uh, are a method for estimating the maturity of technologies uh, during the acquisition phase. Normally, uh, it starts with TRL1 and goes up to TRL9. Uh, related to their uh, relevance uh, and applicability in industry. And as you may see in this slide, uh, we, uh, the slide, the 16 papers, uh, problems and solutions, uh, mostly located in, uh, is located in TRL3, but uh, we have a, a surprising result in this slide uh, some of the papers, uh, for example, for TRL4 and TRL5, we have uh, also uh, some solutions exist in this field. Uh, this is mainly because uh, the because of uh, university and uh, companies collaboration. Uh, mo uh, the, what we see in the papers that the, uh, normally problem problems come from the 
companies and they uh, present uh, the universities and uh, their collaboration present some results and di direct, directly deploy these solutions into their system. That's why uh, we have uh, these higher tier levels in this field. And then in this slide, you see problems and technology readiness level relation. Uh, for example, for deployment, uh, the TRL level, uh, mostly TRL3, but we have some solutions in TRL4. And uh, for the design, uh, we have some solutions in TRL5, which is mostly related to validating the existing solution in a relevant environment in industrial setup. And when it comes to application domain and technology readiness level, uh, we have some results over here. Uh, for example, Internet of Things uh, was the um, mostly ad addressed application domain. And in this uh, area, the uh, TRL levels are uh, mostly three, but we have some existing solutions in TRL4. And for, for the cloud applications uh, and for computing and microservices, we have some existing uh, uh, solutions in TRL5. Uh, I want to explain a deployment problem uh, while employing DevOps for model-based system engineering in uh, IoT domain. That's why I selected a paper from our database, and here is the paper that addresses uh, this problem and present a solution for this. But I want to elaborate more on the, on the existing solution and problem. <clears throat> the paper that uh, you uh, saw earlier uh, describes a situation where uh, multiple applications control the same physical actuators uh, in the setup, and it leads to potential conflicts. These specific applications uh, are uh, energy consumption uh, reduction application. This application controls lights and blinds uh, within the home to reduce energy usage. And another application is a user well-being application, IoT application. This application also controls the lights and blinds, but its purpose uh, is to enhance the occupant's comfort and well-being. Uh, and both applications aim to control the same actuator, lights and blinds, but with different goals and potential conflict comments. And for instance, the energy consumption application might uh, want to close the blinds uh, to reduce cooling needs, while a well-being application might want to them, want them open to increase natural light. Similarly, one application might turn off the lights for energy efficiency, while the other uh, might want them on the occupant comfort. And the paper proposes a model-driven conflict uh, management strategy within a DevOps uh, software uh, development lifecycle. Uh, that will uh, identify these potential conflicts and resolve them at the design phase and the design stage and suggest solutions to manage them effectively. Uh, lastly, uh, I want to also mention some active groups in this field. Uh, first one is from uh, USA, uh, Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. Uh, there are researchers uh, who actively do a research in this field. Uh, another one is also recent. I think it was last year. Uh, the researchers from uh, all over Europe come together and propose a uh, project related to model-based DevOps, called model-based DevOps. And these are the active research groups in this field. And what are the key take key takeaways? Uh, the, the the main key uh, key takeaway is our uh, the problems, challenges that we see in this paper, most related to deployment, automation, and development that I showed earlier. And the interesting results mainly related to technology readiness level in this field uh, for the existing solutions. And lastly, I want to uh, mention that this area is active research area, and all the new researchers are welcome in this field. Thank you so much.